Remake, online meetings, Teams meetings, Zoom meetings, ah, <laughs> whatever clip we're in when we end up on the other end of this dog's breakfast of a situation that we've created, mate, there's a strong argument we had that the, you know, the, this routine expectation for all of our communications just to be done online, I think it's here to stay. Even if you do go back to the office, mate, literally the last year has been a cultural shift. Tons of people are going to be given the option of permanently working from home, even after we're all done with this. And I reckon a lot of people are going to take up that offer. So a lot of your colleagues, clients, customers, suppliers, delegates, many of them are going to refuse to travel now for minor appointments and trivial things that would have possibly justified a face-to-face -face meeting in the past. But, you know, in my opinion, these online meetings, they're here to stay. You know, they're going to be standard. So anything we can do to make them more efficient, more productive, take them to the next level, well, that seems like a bit of a no-brainer to me. Which leads me onto this. And the title of this video, mate, is no exaggeration because what I'm going to show you here harnesses the power of the de facto, well, what is arguably the de facto industry standard in online broadcasting and allows you to leverage that in your day-to-day -day work meetings and presentations. And it's free. It's free. It's simple-ish. Uh, it's, it's, it's easy enough to use, but it's scalable, meaning that you'll get out of this what you invest into it. So what I'm talking about here is OBS. It's the Open Broadcaster Software. Now, OBS is nothing new. OBS has been around for years. You know, it's the standard for broadcasting local system content. Basically, what's shown on your PC out to an online source. And that's typically been the likes of YouTube and Twitch. You know, it's heavily used for live streaming gameplay onto those platforms. But what makes OBS different to just sharing your desktop, which is something you can already do through, I keep saying Zoom and Teams because those are the two standard ones. But what makes it different to that is OBS is almost like a mini production studio. You can create scenes inside of OBS with each scene being a different layout of either your desktop or your desktop with a webcam over the top of it, an array of different cameras from different sources, images, text, videos, specific application windows. You can toggle between any of the scenes at any time, like a TV producer, mate, controlling out a broadcast feed. So traditionally, that broadcast would be sent out from OBS to the likes of Twitch and YouTube, where viewers would watch that on the website. Which is a great story, Neil. Tell me more. What's this got to do with online meetings? Well, recently, OBS enabled a brand new feature into their application called the Virtual Camera. And at first glance, this seems pretty forgettable, innocuous, nothing of any particular note, until you realize what this thing actually does. The OBS Virtual Camera creates a pretend webcam device that's attached to your computer and it broadcasts, ergo displays the entire OBS feed onto this virtual webcam. Probably tell where I'm going with this now. But then in Teams and in Zoom, instead of using your laptop integrated webcam or your, I don't know, your Logitech webcam as the video device for all of your calls and presentations, instead you choose the OBS virtual webcam and boom, you can now leverage the entire composition and production capabilities of OBS in your online video communications. And if your first thought there is, yeah, but mate, I don't want all that, I don't want fancy stuff for the most part. I use just the webcam for most of my meetings. I don't want all of that for, you know, just there. Well, you don't have to. In OBS, you just create a scene containing just your webcam and then you can broadcast to just that for most of the time. You've got all of those other scenes ready when you need them. O OBS is just gonna broadcast your webcam through the virtual camera. But if you take that further, if you're, for example, present presenting a PowerPoint deck, Sure, you can share your desktop through Team and Zooms, but what if you want to be visually seen alongside the slides that you're talking over? Maybe the audience seeing you discussing what you're presenting helps you deliver your message. Well, then what you can do is create a scene in OBS which picks up on the PowerPoint, and then you can add in your physical webcam, put that over the PowerPoint, position it where you want to, and then you just add in some, you can, if you want to, you can add in some extra graphics like text and images within the scene, and then you push that composed scene out of the virtual camera and into your meeting. But you see, mate, it isn't just limited to that. that it, it does so much more than that. Like, for example, when you're presenting, if you want to take a break, you don't have to just like, you don't have to stand up and walk away so everyone can see your backside. You know, you can create like a cut scene in OBS. That could be a company brand or a marketing messaging or a be right back message. Uh, like, what, what if you know you're going to play a media file, for example, like a video during the presentation, mate? how re unreliable are videos within PowerPoint that are embedded. Yeah, you can, sure, you can scramble through File Explorer looking to open the video only for it then, I don't know, open on a second monitor or not open at all for reasons that you'll never find out. But in OBS, you just create a, a scene, attach in a new media source, embed the video, 
And then when you're presenting, you just literally click the scene, the video nicely fades in from black and starts playing instantly to the audience. It's awesome. But with this, mate, honestly, there's no limits on what you can broadcast. If you want to present a design concept, either using a CAD application or even VR, mate, you can stream the VR output to OBS, to the virtual camera. With you alongside it, you can have your webcam showing you in VR with also what you're looking at in VR alongside it with some maybe graphics that you want to show. You can smoothly transition between applications as well, showing it, keeping a consistent, clean corporate branded theme overlay. But mate, if this hasn't already sold you, peep this. How many times have you been in a meeting online and you've just wanted to show somebody something on your phone? You know, you've been on a call and you've just been, I've got something on the desk here or there's something on my phone that I want to show people. And now have you just shown your phone at the webcam? You know, when you put your phone screen up against the webcam, it's not a good look. Well, mate, now you can just pair your phone screen with OBS. And at the click of a scene, you can now live stream your phone's camera to Teams or Zoom. Just consider the utility that brings to your table if you're hosting a meeting. And you just want to quickly, oh, I've got something on the desk here. Let me just show you it dead quickly. You don't have to actually point the phone screen at the webcam. You can like actually stream your phone's camera to OBS. Uh, it, it, it is sharing your phone's screen to OBS. So you just have to be obviously mindful of any notifications that might flash up that you wouldn't want any people at work reading. <laughs> that might be a little bit dangerous. But yeah, mate, there's so many extensions as well that are built for OBS. Uh, it's got a huge community. And at this point, almost everything's already been done. Uh, and it's almost all free as well. And that's not to mention the ton of source customization options available. Like you can crop videos, crop images, there's color grading, you can apply LUTs to webcams and video sources. So much stuff you can do with it, mate. And it's it's always been there, but it's always been for another world, not for us to use as a, as a webcam for meetings and presentations. But now we can, we can use it as a webcam source. So in all seriousness, if you do invest a ton of time into learning what OBS is capable of, and if you decide to set up a decent scene collection, not only would it make you more, or could make you more productive and organized in meetings if you use it right, but you'll look like a fucking rock star, mate, whilst you're at it. And you'll set a strong, lasting, positive impression on the people in that meeting. And who knows, maybe at some point in the future, you'll find yourself on a super important meeting where that was all that mattered. So, yeah, title of the video really wasn't an exaggeration. This is Technology for Industry. I'm Neil Cross. Appreciate you watching. If you want to see more of me, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell. If you want to support the channel or just buy me a coffee, mate, there's a thanks. There's a PayPal donation link in the description along with my affiliate programs. If you're an Autodesk user, I've got links to their current discount promotions in the description if you're about to renew a license or buy a new license. So anyway, I've got to go. You stay pro. Thanks very much. Toodles.